So here they're telling you about facial recognition and how they're going to, it's going to be so wonderful when they can just hand pick people out of crowds with facial recognition, drag them off kicking and screaming or not, whatever the case, into some back room dragged off by the authorities without any charges, you know, which they, they, they technically can't do. You don't have to comply. They can't uh, arrest you without charges, right? So they can't detain you or transport you against your will. And so you have to reject the premise on all this stuff before it's too late because they're doing broad strokes, but they can also hand pick out. It, it may not seem serious to you unless somebody you know gets dragged off like that and then you never see or hear from them again and you wonder what happened. And then, oh, they'll tell you all kinds of stories, right? They'll have video or whatever it is, but you weren't there, so you don't know about all that, right? So that's just what I worry about for when I see this kind of stuff. And then also this business that you'll see later with what China's doing. And do you know that whenever you walk into a Walmart, it's already happening to you now uh, because these camera systems that Walmart has. So it's all over uh, the place. And based on what they've apparently done in Paradise, California, I would be a bit worried if I were you. If, and everybody should be. I think that we sell tigran here on the and see what's going on. Can you Games, concerts, performances, live events bring us together in ways that no other experience can. But the threat of catastrophic violence is real. Dude, I just watched the video Paradise Lost number 23 and I noticed something and he wasn't wrong. Here's the video where I just can't believe it because it really looks like a war zone. It really does. Well, it's weird because when you look at this woman's face right here, that's her. She's at Newtown, Connecticut, and she's also with CNN. You see that? ...and helping destroy the country from the inside using propaganda in the Smith-Munt Act, and CNN as the vessel. And I mean, come on, don't forget, CNN's been caught since Gulf War number one. She's, she's really a, a very happy person. I just can't believe it. It really looks like a war zone. You know? I just can't believe it. It really looks like a war zone. Very... Uh... Well put together, excited about life generally. It looks like a war zone. So what this does is it doesn't take any validity away from this video. It just shows that this and this and all these are exactly what we're telling you they are. Yep. Always with the sunglasses, you bet. Richie from Boston. <laughs> A CNN crisis actor. Look at this. This is supposed to be breaking news of the train derailment, and the CIA animation has already been produced and vetted. We were in the front seat, and this there she is. red suitcase just came flying at me. Um, our train was actually on its side, so it pushed me onto the side of the train. Video obtained. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the face, that face of a woman with the fake blonde hair and those miraculous, uh, uh, I guess the miraculous circumstances were her glasses survive all these bombings and <laughs> SWAT teamings. Her glasses always survive these things, including getting knocked in the head and yep. train derailments. Her glasses are always intact. And it, another one just happened right across from us and it... it it was just this huge, huge explosion, and there's just debris everywhere. A big, huge explosion while we were having lunch, yeah. and everybody ran for the doors and windows. And There's a huge explosion, and everyone ran. And she uses these slightly different accents, but her nose and her glasses are always, always the same. Yeah. Okay, she changes the color of her hair. Uh, she does this little, uh, she changes her voice inflection. Uh, but if Not you much. analyze her nose, her nose is always the same. And mm -hmm. she's got that little thing on her lip going on. Yeah. And I'm not easily fooled by this. This is the same chick. Yeah. Four I times usually, she got caught. I usually don't go for things like this. But I got to tell you guys, I am. this is the same woman. News report on April 19th, 2013. Here she comes again. Uh, I heard a boom and the sky was blue. It's 
is something I never experienced in my news career, is pulling up on the scene and hearing multiple gunshots fired. We heard um, three big booms and uh, multiple gunshots. It was like a ton of gunshots, and then like boom, boom, like three big bangs. That, that's all they want you to know, is they want you to know about the boom, booms, you know, because, mm. uh, right? Mm-hmm. Just don't want those specific details. So they only want you to hear, we heard uh, booms, and I saw people running, mm. and a suitcase hit my head. Yes. Yes. Mm. But, but my glasses always survive. <laughs> okay. And, okay, there she is, side by side. That's the same effing chick. It okay? is. Period. It's, it certainly is. That is the same <laughs> chick, okay? This lady right here, okay? It's just dated different, and she's got uh, different makeup on, uh, right? of course. Here it is. Mm. CNN showed the crisis actor from two different angles. Here's Sandy Hook shooting, and now this is in okay, 2012. So here with Victoria Munoz and... And she's back. Yes, that's right. Guess who I caught doing some more acting, crisis acting, that is. And you'll like her role this time. She's gone ethnic, and she's covering herself up. But I've got some news for this Texan lady. It don't. Work none, no good, no more. We knows who you is. Now that horrible attempt at a Texan accent is probably about as good as she would have been. So she decided to go with a quasi-Middle Eastern, uh, semi-Arabic, question mark, question mark, question mark, accent. And... It uh, It's not very convincing, um, but she did her little thing, but she's all covered up. See, we're winning because they're trying harder not to be exposed. What was she like as a person, or how did what, what respect did you know her? She's, she's really uh, a very happy person, very uh, well put together, very excited about life generally. Yeah, and did, did, you, did you know Adam at all? And her S's, right? Mm. My suitcase. Yeah. And my little freaking hangy downy thingy on my lip and my nose and yeah. my glasses always make it. But I just changed the color of my hair and the inflection of my voice. We're not fooled. Okay. Yeah. This chick got freaking caught again. So She's we've actually, seen this woman like four or five different times. Yeah. I'm going to say we don't even need to talk to her. The threat of catastrophic violence is real. And long security lines create a frustrating fan experience. And please, could we do something with the assault weapons so that we could stop this club from ever getting any new members? I beg all of you, please. And I don't want prayers. I don't want thoughts. I want gun control, and I hope to God nobody else sends me any more prayers. And please, could we do something? with the assault weapons so that we could stop this club from ever getting any new members. I beg all of you, please. And I don't want prayers. I don't want thoughts. I want gun control, and I hope to God nobody else sends me any more prayers. The threat of catastrophic violence is real. And long security lines create a frustrating fan experience. And let's see, what are they interested in? So it actually highlights an, an issue that you've all heard about before. With the advance of the technology and the phones and the encryptions, law enforcement, whether that's at the state, local, or the federal level, is increasingly not able to get into these phones. So, so I'm not going to describe what phone it is, because I don't want to tell every bad guy out there what phone to buy to harass our efforts on trying to find justice here. I can assure you that we're working very hard to get into the phone, and that will continue until we find an answer. U.S. Marshal Service is looking into a video posted online this weekend that appears to show an officer breaking the woman's cell phone as she tries to record video.
It happened in Southgate, California. The U.S. Marshals confirmed the operation pictured in the video involves some of its officers, but it is not confirmed that the man grabbing the phone was a U.S. Marshal. Vladimir Dutier has been looking into this. You can see his full report Wednesday on CBS This Morning. Your security teams work hard to keep fans safe, but even the best security teams can't possibly remember all the names and faces of known terrorists, stalkers, and other banned fans. Meanwhile, extensive security screening creates long lines for loyal fans and VIP ticket holders, making it impossible for guest services to deliver a seamless customer experience. Without face recognition, your teams won't be alerted until it's too late. It doesn't have to be this way. Face recognition gives your team the power to proactively prevent violence by matching against a database of wanted terrorists, banned fans, and dangerous criminals at a rate of 25 million images per second. Your security team is notified in real time the moment a match occurs. Face recognition doesn't just make events safer. Face First also allows VIP ticket holders to virtually skip lines and enjoy truly personalized fan experiences. Face First makes your security team more powerful, instantly scanning crowded choke points and choke points and choke points and choke points point, and helping to ensure that only authorized individuals gain access to private locations such as locker rooms, training facilities and backstage areas. Consistently accurate, even in challenging conditions, Face First isn't fooled by wigs, hats, beards, or other common changes in appearance. Match alerts are intelligently routed to team members with directives based on your operational rules and procedures. It doesn't profile based on race, gender, national origin, or age. It just works. Experts agree that face recognition is the only fail-safe solution for safer, smarter events. Prevent terrorism, keep out banned fans, treat super fans like superstars. Learn more at facefirst.com. The vision has been for a vehicle to become a smart device on wheels, a third living space. Bosch has brought a critical ingredient for that into reality. Bosch facial and voice recognition technology remembers each user and their personal settings and preferences. Two-step identification means a higher rate of accuracy. Show me my calendar. Without even touching a button, the system recognizes you, remembers your seat and mirror positions, climate settings, media preferences, and more. Even better than a smartphone, Active listening and seamless integration means there are no buttons to push. Simply say, Hello, Casey. Please show me the weather today. And the controls are at your verbal command. The system syncs to personal devices, connecting to dynamic data such as calendar entries and contacts. Also, unlike most smart devices, it can recognize and be customized for several users. Hello, Casey. Show me the weather. This customization is ideal for car sharing services. Easy, dependable, flexible, capable, and another way Bosch has brought mobility vision into reality. China's pursuing an ambitious plan to create an omnipresent video surveillance network. The Shuiliang or Sharp Eyes project aims to extend and integrate video surveillance from cities into villages and from roads into residential compounds. It aims to use artificial intelligence, big data and deep learning to analyse this mountain of video evidence, to work out who's doing what, where and when to track suspects and the people they associate with, and even to predict crime. 
In November, I visited three tech companies in the cities of Beijing and Chongqing to see how China plans to make the communist slogan, the masses have sharp eyes, into a reality. Here are a few of the ideas that the tech companies showcased. These cameras are looking at a road junction and they're identifying everything that's passing through. They're looking at cars, reading the number plates, and they're looking at pedestrians, classifying pedestrians according to their age, their gender, what kind of clothes they're wearing, even what kind of hairstyles they have. This software analyzes crowds. It's producing a heat map of where people are massing together, the sort of thing you might use to prevent overcrowding. You can also see that it's also able to track individuals through the crowd, so if you're looking for a suspect, this is the kind of software you might want to use. Here we can see two cameras picking faces out of the crowd, comparing those faces to a national database of suspects of wanted men and women. The police then look at the matches that are flagged and see whether they think that's someone they're looking for. They can then swoop in to potentially arrest or question the person that the cameras have identified. A completely different application now. This camera is trained on the face of a truck driver. It's looking at his facial expressions and what he's doing to see whether he's showing any signs of tiredness. If the score rises above a certain level, then he's seen as too tired to drive. His company will be alerted. They'll give him a call and tell him to take a rest. The Sharp Eyes project has already been rolled out in more than 50 cities. So far, the tech doesn't quite match the ambition, but experts agree that facial recognition is improving fast and is a technology of the future. Concerns are being raised about whether the system will be used in China to unfairly target ethnic minorities or be used as a way to crack down on dissidents and activists. But in the tech startups that I visited, the young elite staff seemed cheerfully unaware of those kind of concerns. For decades, facial recognition has been the stuff of science fiction. But for many here in China, it's already becoming a part of daily life. Thanks to huge advances in artificial intelligence, people here can use their faces to log into mobile apps, access office buildings, and take money out of ATMs. At this KFC in Beijing, you can even use your face to get meal recommendations. Not all of the applications are so mundane. Police are also using the technology to shame jaywalkers and to scan crowds for persons of interest. A massive centralized database makes it possible for authorities and some private companies to identify nearly anyone by capturing their face. Access to these photos is a boon to companies like search giant Baidu, which is using them to build a range of products. These are a data set maintained by government. Basically means that for almost everyone who has the ID, for everyone over 18 years old, uh, the, the, the government will have uh, uh, your face in the database. Some worry this technology could lead to serious invasions of privacy and make it easier for authorities to track political dissidents. But others see it as a powerful tool for public safety. Not only helps you track criminals, it also helps find missing people. So it's good for the society. There are 170 million surveillance cameras installed in China, including more than a dozen on this stretch of road behind Beijing's Forbidden City. Analysts say China plans to install 450 million new surveillance cameras by the year 2020. The massive market represented by those cameras has attracted interest from established companies and startups alike. At one facial recognition startup, SenseTime, employees' faces are scanned at the door. Inside, the company displays a system that serves up advertisements based on a person's age and gender. Um, and a Nikon. I, I do like photography. Not unlike the ads in a certain Tom Cruise movie. You could use a Guinness right about now. The company also sells more serious tools, capable of tracking both people and objects. This is a live feed recorded by this camera. It recognizes different attributes of uh, people, a car, or um, bicycles. This is actually a very useful for the police department to extract information from uh, the videos. Basically, um, it makes the video um, searchable. Besides having access to reams of data, 
Companies like SenseTime also benefit from China's relatively casual attitude towards privacy. In a country accustomed to government snooping, many are willing to have their faces scanned for the sake of convenience. A bigger concern is that the systems could be tricked or hacked using fake faces. Critics note that a hacked password can be changed, but everyone has just one face. If the rectangle is green, that means it is a live people. And uh, if the rectangle is red, it is a attack or hack, actually. When our systems first go online, we, we do suffer from a huge volume of, uh, a huge amount of hack. But uh, by collecting sufficient hack data, I think the machine can tell whether it is a hack behavior or it, it is a uh, true person. Facial recognition is just one of several branches of artificial intelligence technologies that have already started to redefine what's possible in China and elsewhere. And of course, just like any technology, it's susceptible to abuse. You have a very advanced tool, so you could use it to do good things and you could use it to do bad things, but the key is the way you choose. Well, what do you think? You think just because somebody wears a costume and makes up laws and rules without your consent that they should have the power to do all these things using whatever technologies are available to kidnap people and put them in cages because the rules, but they're don't you think they should also be required to abide by the same rules or that you shouldn't have to abide by the rules if you didn't agree to the rules? You only have to abide by natural law? How about that? How about before they can kidnap you and put you in a cage, you could kidnap them and put them in a cage for something like, well, maybe kidnapping people and putting them in cages? Or, uh, how about equal application of the law? You've heard of equal protection under the law. How about equal application of the law? Meaning, if they're going to kidnap people and put them in cages for this or that, if they do it to one person, they have to do it to everybody who's ever done that thing that, you know, causes them to believe they have to kidnap them and put them in a cage. Oftentimes, I think that it's not necessary. Um, before they use this technology, they should verify if everybody they have locked up in cages called jails and prisons uh, really belong there. What, did they grow a plant or something like that? What is the reason that they're there? Is it legit? Um... The percentage of people jailed, the percentage of people convicted of crimes, is it equal among citizens and officers of the law? Or do officers of the law get some kind of a pass? Um, what are the rates on that? Are we to believe that they're not human, they don't make mistakes? Or if making mistakes is human and that's forgivable, then why are citizens jailed for such things. Hmm. Something to think about. <laughs>